Let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. Amen. Seems odd that I may start that way tonight. It's not how, how I start a service. Typically, many Lutherans know that prayer. And yet, if you say it like my kids, you say, Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Let these gifts to us be blessed. And we dig into the meal. We move quickly to that place. That's how I felt my whole ministry about how Monday Thursday was. Hurry, hurry, get to Good Friday, get to Easter morning. What's this day all about? And I made a covenant a long time ago when I began ministry that I would make sure that this day was special. A day to be treasured, to, to really see what the Lord did, what Jesus was doing in this moment with His disciples, setting us up for what we do on a regular basis, a weekly basis now at Mount Calvary, to celebrate a meal with the Lord. But over, when we think about meals, there's so much that may come to our minds that we have questions about and, and wonder about and, and really think about what, do, what does it mean to share a meal of love? Where have you been loved by a meal? When I think about the places that I've been loved by a meal, I'm immediately transported back to Oogie's in Ottawa, Illinois with my grandpa and root beer floats. And every time my kids have a root beer float, I share that story with them. I don't remember all the conversations or the moments, but I certainly remember that I was loved. When we have the opportunity to occasionally have crab, I share the memories of being with my grandpa out in the Florida uh, ocean with our traps, trapping crab, and then coming back and eating crab and having limeades and, and the thoughts and the love that comes up to my mind. Even today in my smoothies, which are more healthy than some of those other meals, are filled with grape juice, a reminder of my grandpa sitting at the table carving his grape juice and, and the smells that came out, the love that I experienced sitting with my grandpa. And I continue that tradition in all sorts of ways with my kids and my family and the people I know. Ellie and I spend our Fridays going out for lunch on her half day and she always gets to pick and she always makes sure that every, the place we go has ice cream. As I think about those memories and I think about the Lord's Supper and a meal of love, I ask the question, are my memories of being loved by a meal healthy? Now, the more I've gotten to know more about health and what to eat and how we do that as a culture, there's become more and more questions about how those meals and memories are healthy and fit together and what are they supposed to be and, and questions of my own heart and mind, how to feed my kids healthy meals that they feel love in and cared about and don't regret eating or don't want to eat. How do I do that? And obviously, as fallen, broken people, we can never eat perfectly healthy. We're going to make mistakes. There's no way for us to fully do that in our perfection. And that's why we're here tonight. And that's why we'll be here this weekend, because we know that someone had to do it for us. But if we're going to put the pieces together of a meal being loved by Jesus, and, and not just taking our meals of love, but taking what it means to be loved by Jesus, we look through time to learn where the nutrition came together to be given to us tonight to truly understand what it means to be loved by Jesus in a meal. It started a long time ago. It was, it was brought to us in some of the readings tonight, but even further, to go back to what they are celebrating and hear it spoken again, the meal of love from God. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons. According to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of the month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. 
Then thou shalt take some of the blood and put it on the doorpost and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it, and they shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted its head and with its legs and its inner parts, and you shall let none of it remain until this, the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and all of all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord, the blood shall be my sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout the generations, as a statute forever. You shall keep it as a feast. This is the celebration our Lord Savior Jesus was sitting with his disciples and meal he was eating. The love meal that they had passed on from generation to generation. Why so many rules with this meal? For a minute it doesn't feel so loving. There's so many different expectations and and parts that they're supposed to understand and keep and do the right way. It feels all this pressure of, of what to do. We at Mount Calvary have remembered this meal we've done it at times where we did it where we went through that seder supper together we talked through the specific details about what those parts of each meal meant and and what it reminded them of the slavery that they were in and what they were brought out of and the freedom that god gave in that that was that passover moment a meal of love where they knew that god loved them so what does it mean to be loved when we are loved by, by a meal prepared by, G, by Jesus, is it enjoyable? Or is it like that where they had to eat it quickly in haste and make sure that everything was taken care of and done perfectly? What does it mean to have joy in the meal of Jesus? Not everything that we do has to have joy in it. There are certain understandings and expectations and things that we have responsibility and vocation and understanding, but... Is there joy to be found in the meals of Jesus? We look further ahead then. We look back to the past to see the meal that was brought to today, but now we look further ahead and say, what about the meals in heaven where we'll finally be reunited with, with God together? What will those meals feel like? Revelation 22, 1-4 says, Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as a crystal, flowing from the throne of God, and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city also, on either side of the river, the tree of life with twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and His servants will worship Him. They will see His face, and His name will be on their foreheads. When I read this passage, I hear the joy and the excitement of the fruit and the blessing it will be to eat and be with the Lord forever. And what will be gone in it, we find that joy in the meal and that it's promised and that it's spoken about. It may not be the same picture in my mind of the root beer float when I think about the fruits that are there, but they seem to be wonderful and enjoyable and outside of the pains and challenges of the world. And Jeremiah brings all of this together when the people are able to insert their understanding of a love meal into his prophecy. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not like the covenant that made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, declares the Lord, I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people, and no longer shall each one teach his neighbor, and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. This passage doesn't directly say the word meal or food, 
But when they hear that moment of being brought out of Egypt, when they hear that moment of that freedom that they experience, they can't help but remember the meals like I remember with my grandpa or I pray my daughter remembers with me. There was that meal that was so important to them and a meal that they passed down to the generation and told them over and over again and a meal that they knew was now coming together that that was fully realized or would be fully realized when the Messiah came to rescue them and redeem them and, and that all of those meals would be brought together for the final freedom to be free from sin, no longer facing the challenges and suffering of the world, and they hear that promised. And that's the meal that Jesus sits down with his disciples to speak about this new covenant, this new promise, what it means to celebrate a meal of love forever into the promise of eternity. And he says these words to them, He said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. You know, I had a a couple prayer partners in my life, and we used to always eat together. I rarely remember the food that we ate and what we ate together, but I certainly remember the time they gave to me, the time they spent with me. And when I hear Jesus speak these words, we see to be loved by Jesus in a meal is to know he desires to spend time with you. He earnestly desires, it says. The the original language in there makes sure that the emphasis is on the desiring. He, He desires to be with you. That's what this meal is about tonight. He knows that his disciples are about to go into the days and weeks ahead of all the challenges they will face, and he desires to be with them, to prepare them, to know that they are loved by him. And tonight he desires to be with you. He goes on and he he, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves, for I tell you, from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom comes. To be loved by Jesus is to be loved forever. He knows, like he knew with the disciples, what were, are in our days and weeks ahead. And, and he knows what we'll walk out the door and go into. And he comes and he gives his meal to us. And we hear the promise of forgiveness given to us, of, of love given to us, of, of the fact that he is with us no matter what we are facing. And that is what a meal of love means to be with Jesus. That he desires to be with us And He desires to be with us forever. And so when they go into this weekend, as we already know the story of what they'll face tomorrow, the sadness they'll face, the the wonder, the curiosity, the confusion, the frustration, all the emotions that they will feel over the next several days, Jesus is preparing them with His meal of love to know that He will be with them. That this has already been set in place. That this story has been in motion since they remember the meal of love that they celebrated over and over again with the Passover that even though they will face these challenging times, it's God who loves them dearly, who knew exactly what they needed, and that is what is about to happen. happen. This meal of love is given to them with that promise and that understanding and shared in a way that they would hold on to it through all of those times. And tonight it's given to us in this way. It transforms from just a meal that tastes good or a meal of time we spend with loved ones to a meal that truly nourishes us, truly fulfills something that other meals we can struggle with. I'm very aware that some meals come with guilt, They come with guilt about what to eat and what not to eat and all those things. What's beautiful and what's different about the the meal that we have with Jesus is it's entirely guilt-free. Actually, it's even better than guilt-free. The meal eliminates guilt with the taste of forgiveness and love. That's what we're tasting and knowing tonight The meal that we share with Jesus is not only that He desires to be with us, 
Not only that he knows what we're going to face tomorrow and has given everything for us to be ready so that one day we'll be with him forever, feasting with him and no longer suffering and facing the challenges of the world, but also that his meal eliminates the guilt that we feel in our lives. I don't know any other meal that could do that or could transform us in that way, but that is why we put such high importance. That's why this is a sacrament, a sacred act that's given to us. We taste and touch the blood of Jesus and hear that forgiveness and know our guilt is eliminated. It is gone because it is proclaimed that we are free once and for all. The Passover was a glimpse of that moment that they are freed from that slavery and this tonight is that final concluding promise that will be shown to us again in the next several days that we are free forever from sin, death, and the devil. And so we taste tonight the meal of Jesus. And I pray you feel that love and know He desires to be with you. And He eliminates the guilt. He gives you forgiveness and grace. And He loves you. And that is what it means to be loved in a meal with Jesus. Let's pray. Jesus, we have many meals in our lives, and while some are full of love, others are full of guilt. Thank you tonight for desiring to be with us. Thank you, Jesus, for providing love, forgiveness, and grace in your meal. May we taste your sweet grace in this meal tonight. Amen.